Well, hello to you. Welcome to the Field of Streams, where I, your host, Janine McRae, bring you the tiny thoughts that stream from my brain and present them to you as though they're the finest silk pyjamas that feel so sensual and luxurious against your skin that upon wearing them to bed you are guaranteed to fall into the deepest of slumbers where all you ever dream about are joyful things and never dark things and quite often unicorns frolicking in rainbow pastures of soft and inviting marshmallow. Mmm, Freudian probably. Now, I can't promise you much with these whimsies, but I can promise you this. I won't keep you long. A promise like that deserves a follow, don't you think? Tap that follow button. Every time you do, a writer remembers to use spell check. Let's talk inspiration. This episode firmly has its feet, body, head and mind in the idea of nostalgia being something that holds us back or down. Or drowns us in the river with thoughts of, back in my day, things were better. Were they really better? Or is nostalgia an anvil that we drag around with us, chafing at our ankles like a shackle? Well, you, ju you just said it was an anvil, and now you're saying it's shackles. Hmm. Actually, if there was any inspiration for me wandering down this little dark laneway, it was me watching a video of Prince his Purple Highness, being interviewed on Larry King about why he changed his name for that brief period of time to that symbol thing. In it, the glorious champion of Purple said it was simply because he wanted to make a change. I'm making little rabbit ear signals here. And move on to a new plateau of his life and work. That symbol was, for him I think, a reset button. People really responded poorly to that, I think. People don't like change. We rear up against it and snort and puff and get stuck with how things are and we want them to stay that way. But change happens. Things change. That's what this one's about. And that's all I'll say as an intro. Let's go. No more waffle. I invite you to sit back, relax, and allow me to read to you a piece of my writing called Forged on the Anvil of Change. Nostalgia would be a catchy name for a disease, but it's not. A disease, I mean. Nostalgia is the anvil chained to our ankle as we wade into the river, our sights set firmly on the mystery of the opposing bank, our final destination. This mighty chunk of mental metal chafes and rubs and reminds us constantly of what was and what used to be. It sinks into the soft soil of our riverbed, tugging on our leg like a toddler on our trousers. We are anchored as the giggling water flows over our skin and on and on and on. To where? That's none of our business. Keep your eyes on the bank. The water won't stop. It moves with languid yet purposeful sexiness, always flowing, always going, places to be, new ankles to tickle at. Urgent or slow, still or raging, it is constantly on the move, onward to the sea of its unknown and thrilling destiny. And us, here, with our anvils. We point, we speak. We wave our back-in-my-day arms and roll the didn't-used-to-be-this-way words in our mouths like loose coins in a tumble dryer. Our tongues are fat with it. We are the living in la-la, the making things great, the frozen in amber for all of time fossil makers. It wasn't great then, or it was. It doesn't really matter. It's not that it was better or worse. It was just different. We were different. You were different. Life goes on, oh blood D, oh blood da, etc. Change is inevitable. Nostalgia is its keeper. It jots down notes, takes photos of the wreckage, or builds shrines to the triumphs. But this is not our temple. We're not supposed to prostrate ourselves to worship the holiest manifestation of the remember-when times with our robes choking the flab of our memory. It's an okay place to visit, but we aren't supposed to live there. We're supposed to live here, 
now. With change in your heart and nostalgia in the back seat, you must take firmly the wheel. Look only in your rear view when you need a reminder of its I spy with my little eye games. Then gently apply your foot to the accelerator so as not to jiggle it too violently as you propel yourself forward. Accept that the brake lines are cut, but know that as long as your speed remains manageable, you can easily change direction. Also know that the face you see today is not the face of yesterday, nor will it be the face of tomorrow should you be gifted that day too. The mirror has two faces and both of them are you, but not you, but definitely you. The freckles of your nose, the whites of your eyes, the curl of your lip, the length of your earlobes. Today is not tomorrow and your face will reinvent itself again and again, like Edison on a tear. If nostalgia is the narrator of time, skin is the archivist of record and no amount of moisturiser will stop the cataloguing. We want to Han Solo our children in carbonite, but only on the days when they are being sweet, because this moment is an I love you, I know moment, and to lose it will tear your heart from its mooring. But again, the Solo who freezes today is not the same Solo who unfreezes tomorrow, and this difference is more than temporary blindness. He was frozen in carbonite against his will. He is forever changed. The action has caused the reaction, and to not see how freezing time doesn't work is our own blindness. The clock starts immediately. You can't stop the clock. And it's not just our children, it's our idols too. We don't like artists to change. It reminds us that we too are as pliant as the wind and as impermanent as a custard tart. Prince changed his name because he wanted to make a change and move to a new plateau in his life, to divorce himself from his past. But we didn't care. He sought to break free of his anvil without realising we would forever carry it back to him, and for him, wherever he went. We don't want people to reset especially if their reset upsets our nostalgia for them. We want them to stay the same. With our longing for the past, we are again dragging our anvils. We seek out those with the same wrought iron weights and rejoice when they clang together like some noontime bell in a universal town square. Why? Patterns. We are caught in our patterns, stiff-arming change and preventing the eraser head of environmental influence from rubbing too hard at our shape. The brocade of your taste looks fine as it is, right? The chevrons of your love are firm and immovable. Do you think your paisley makes you electable, your fleur-de-lis intelligent? Your patterns are overwhelming your evolution, friends, and the hound's tooth of your anger makes this room seem mighty small. But you are not alone. We are all caught on the walls, papered to sameness, while the peel of potential progress hints mournfully at our corners. It can all change. We can all change. But only if we cease to resist. Oh, that bruise on my arm? That's where life tried to drag me toward change, and I resisted at first, but it's fading now. The blood that made this bruise is already being absorbed and transported to some back room. I am constantly eating myself from within, it seems. If I am constantly being rebuilt from the inside out, and not always in medically viable ways, am I still eligible for jury duty? Whatever. I am changing. I am change. No matter if I wish it to be so, I go. It is for the best. I once saw an interview with writer and deep thinker Alan Watts, where he said the following, Life is life because it is always disappearing. Like a disease, nostalgia is debilitating, but remember it is not a disease. It is an anvil a great behemoth of heaviness that's omnipresent and loud. But to see it only as an encumbering weight that pulls you to drowning is a failure of vision. Because you can make things on anvils, 
strong, powerful, beautiful things. I say stick the metal bar in the forge, get your blacksmith's hammer out, and make a change. And there you have it, today's episode. I hope you come back for more. These missives are designed to inspire creative folk to get out there and make something of their own. If you enjoyed what you heard today, follow the podcast so that you never miss an episode and sign up to read my writing at janemacrae.substack.com. But for now, I'll leave you with this. Love what you love, and I'll see you out there making stuff. <laughs>